All right. Uh, now, being a Nigerian seems to require quite some effort. Uh, every single day, Nigerians are trooping out of the country in search of a better life, greener pastures. Um, and Fola Daniel is here to talk to us about uh, keeping hope alive. You know, some of these things um, are, are really, really important, especially if we're young people. And a lot of young people nowadays are just feeling a bit... Um, hopeless uh, without a you know looking for a better word that we can use but you're joining us this morning to talk to us about keeping hope alive which is really really important talk to us okay it's very important to keep hope alive and the the situation is not encouraging actually if you're going to look at what is going on around you but the better part of it is that you can just like you said people are feeling hopeless mm. it's a feeling you can control your feeling. So you can choose to feel hopeless. You can choose to be hopeful. However, some people think that they don't have control over the situation. Here's what we really need to do to ensure that we keep hope alive. The first thing is you have to have something to live for. Mm. If you don't have anything that you're living for, if you don't have a reason to get out of bed every morning, if you don't have a reason to stay awake at night, then it's going to be easy to be drowned by all the negativity around you. Mm. It's very important to say, this is what I am living for. For example, what are you living for? What am I living for? What keeps me going all the time? So it's that thing that you're living for that, that doesn't... That keeps you... Yeah, it, it keeps, keeps you going. Yeah. It doesn't allow you to get discouraged easily. Some people just want others to have a better life. If that's what you're living for, you will be encouraged by the situation. Some people want to build businesses where others can have jobs. You want to see families putting food on their tables. And you know that the reason you, you keep going is because you're able to pay somebody some salary and then the salary puts food on some people's tables. So that encourages you. If you don't have any reason to leave, it becomes easier to give up. Yeah, that, that's well, very important. Too. Now, follow one of the things that uh, most young people say yeah. is the lack of opportunity. Yeah. That is usually what will make people say, you know what, there are no opportunities why I am, so I have to leave or I have to go to another country uh, to seek new opportunities and, and things like that. But what would you say to young people um, in that kind of situation? There are opportunities everywhere, everywhere. And I keep saying this, just like somebody said, I think it was attributed to the late Bishop Benson Idaosa, who said that if you're a lizard here in Nigeria, you cannot become a crocodile when you go to America. Mm. Wherever you are, if you're a lizard, you remain a lizard. If you're a crocodile here in Nigeria, you go to America, you remain a crocodile. So it means that if the capacity is not built from here, nothing changes. I understand that the environment offers better facilities, there are amenities and all of that, but you see, the environment doesn't automatically drop money on your laps. Mm -hmm. The environment doesn't automatically drop opportunities on your lap. You have to have something on the inside that the environment responds to. Yes, sometimes if you want to build some big businesses, if you want to build small businesses, the environment may not be too conducive for it. But you check out some of the people who say that there are no opportunities. They don't have anything within them that they have developed. Mm. So what exactly have you built from within to be able to say, when I get to this other place, I'm certain I'm going to succeed. You have to walk from there. Yeah. And now, okay. now, I wanted to um, uh, also talk about how to then position yourself mentally yeah. to continually be hopeful because that, that's one of the challenges that I, that I know that people face a lot. So um, yes, there's been lack of opportunity. Yes, maybe I've, I've tried this thing over and over again and it doesn't seem to be working. How do I then move from being hopeless to then being continually hopeful that things will change, things will become better? Two things. The first is you have to condition, your, condition yourself to stop working like a thermometer and start working like a thermostat. Hmm. What does a thermometer do? It simply takes the temperature of the atmosphere and tells you this is what is happening around, this is what is going on, this is what, is, this is what I'm seeing. Right. But what does a thermostat do? It is a thermostat that changes the temperature of the environment. So you get into a place, are you going to take the temperature or change the temperature? Right, right. So if you're going to be a thermometer, you simply go around taking the temperature, which means you pass the negativity that you see. You're simply a conduit pipe for negativity. Mm. But if you're going to be a thermostat, it means that you regulate. 
If right. everywhere is hot, you can make it cool. If everywhere is cool or it's too cold, you can make it hot. The other thing is to be emotionally intelligent. And there are several things that you need to do to understand your emotional intelligence. Number one is your self-awareness. Who are you? Mm. How, do you un how much of yourself do you even understand? And apart from your self-awareness, there's also self-recognition. There's social skills, how you relate with other people. There is empathy. You, you need to understand that you must control how much of negativity is being passed on to you. When we talk about hopelessness, it's a lot of negativity that other people are passing to us. Mm. It's a lot of frustrations. It's a lot of aggression. And it goes on even within the family. Mm. The husband comes home, he's frustrated at work. He brings the negativity home, passes it on to the wife. The wife takes the negativity from the husband, passes it to the children. Yeah, so the there's this vicious so cycle. There's of, a vicious cycle yeah. of frustration from something else that is unconnected with our loved ones and the people around. And unconsciously, we keep passing it around. So mm. emotional intelligence will reduce how much of the negativity we're taking from other people. So when somebody does something and somebody flips out suddenly, mm. you have to be smart enough to not allow them flipping out, get into you. Mm. Because if you take it on, you will pass it to somebody else. Wow. So that way you can be more stable and see the brighter side. And I, I, I was saying to you earlier, it's important to act like plants. You know, we are taught about photosynthesis. When plants are growing, they look out for where the light is mm. and grow in the direction of the light. Yeah. So, so humans should also humans grow should grow the in. Yes. Don't hope. just keep going in the direction of the negativity and just focusing on what's not working. There are certain things that are working, and we should go in the direction of what's working. Follow Daniel's Adelesi. Thank Adelesi. you so much for joining. Adelesi, thank you so much for joining us this thank morning. You. And of course, you can follow him on social media uh, for daily motivation.